thank you so much sure. for coming and doing this today. <coughs> okay. First, first, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about who you are um, and what you do at Red Hat and all the other good things. All the good things. Okay. Uh, my name is Sonko Kaiser. I'm team lead for the OpenShift PSET team. The PSET team mainly is responsible for enabling accelerators on OpenShift. And one prime example is uh, the GPU. Uh, we also enabled other accelerator cards like SolarFlare, doing this right now with Mellanox. Um, in the process of enabling those accelerator cards, we developed a operator which is called the Special Resource Operator, which is the base for the NVIDIA GPU operator, for the Mellanox operator, and some other hardware accelerators that are using SRO to enable the hardware. Uh, Last week, I spoke of the OpenShift Commons briefing about some details, how SRO works and how it fits with the NVIDIA GPU operator. Uh, but for today's session, is more hands-on, a demo how to enable GPUs in OKD using the NVIDIA GPU operator and uh, NFD. Okay. Uh, I have here a... OKD cluster, F4.5. Uh, it's pre-installed on AWS. We've seen a lot of installations today, so I don't think we need to see another installation. Um, we have three worker nodes and three master nodes, three CPU worker nodes, and now we need to add a GPU worker node. So the easiest, easiest thing to do on right now is to go to the OpenShift machine API project and I'll look at the machine sets that we have. We have a man machine sets for workers. And we can take, for example, this machine set and just pipe it into a YAML. Worker YAML. And the only thing we need to do if this machine set is change the name, uh, change maybe the cluster machine role, the type, and the important setting is, of course, the instance type. Um, I have a pre-populated machine set here, which I use for this demo. And we are using a G4 instance, with, which has a T4 GPU. On AWS, currently, we get either V100s or T4s. Uh, T4s are mainly used for inferencing and V100s for training. Uh, but because of the low cost and easiest of, of deployment on AWS, we are using here G4 instance. Uh, we can add more settings, but the most important one is the instance type. So we just create our new, oh, I forgot something to say. Uh, another thing we should look for is replicas. I'm setting it to two. So if I instantiate this machine set, we will get two GPU nodes because I'm later on going to run a multi-node uh, TensorFlow benchmark so that we have already two nodes running. So just create, create to get the machine set. And we are seeing we have two desired, two current. They are not ready or available. So in the meantime, when those GPUs are instantiated on AWS, we are going to do a, another step. So for GPU enablement, we have targeted always Red Hat CoreOS or Fedora CoreOS, uh, an immutable system, container-only system, to have the NVIDIA GPU uh, operator working. And that's where we de developed um, the notion of a driver container. A driver container is kind of a delivery mechanism for out of three drivers uh, via container. And we are currently working with NVIDIA to add Fedora core support, but for now we don't have any containers available. So we are going to um, 
build our own driver container. Uh, I have a document. Can I, Diane, can I use the chat function here to post a link to a document? Absolutely. Okay. Link so people can follow and maybe add some comments on this document. This was also shared on the Option Commons briefing last week. I already checked out the needed repositories, so I'm just going to change directories in here. We have a folder Fedora, and we can run a podman build with the right tag. It's all cached, so we don't need to build it right away. And we can then get to our private repository. Uh, I explain in detail in the document how to tag the driver and how to use uh, the repository plus plus the name um, and how to instantiate the NVIDIA GPU operator later on uh, with some settings to make it run. Um, let's, see, get notes. let's take a look at our notes. Okay, they are not yet up. When those two GPU nodes appear, we have a heterogeneous cluster. In the past, people were manually labeling the nodes uh, as a GPU node or as a CPU node uh, to steer the right containers on the right node. Uh, since OpenShift 4.2, and we are currently working on adding to OKD as well, we introduced NFD. NFD is a project which exposes node features uh, to the cluster, for example, CPU flags, PCI devices, um, and other hardware that is exposed. So the first step is to bootstrap heterogeneity so that we know and have the labels automatically applied to our cluster without manual intervention. Uh, we are currently in the working or to adding it to the operator hub for OKD so that uh, customers can install it just by one click. But for now, we have to check it out and call it via make plus the NFT operator. We change the branch to release 4.5, and we can just run a pull policy always and make deploy. What this will do, it will deploy a NFT, will deploy NFT masters, which are responsible for labeling, and NFT workers that are running on the workers for detecting the features. Just need to wait until the connections are made from the NFT master and the worker. Okay, all things are running. Now let's see get notes. We can have a look at our notes. Okay, one of the GPUs is coming up. But we can, for example, look at one of our CPU nodes. I'll see this scribe node. And what we see is all the things that is here with the prefix feature node, Kubernetes.io, are coming from NFT. Uh, we have here the CPU flex, one feature. How we're using those flags is for optimized workloads. So, for example, if you have math libraries that you optimize with ABX 512, you can steer your workloads uh, to these nodes. Um, otherwise, you will get, for example, a legal instruction if you're running on a later node or on later CPU. Um, you can extract if SLinux is enabled. And for the driver container to work, uh, we need the kernel versions that are running. We need uh, where is the system OS, for example, the operating system release, it's a Fedora 42, so we can, by tagging the driver container in a, in a specific way, we can steer only drivers that are pre-built for this kind of uh, kernel version and operating system to the right node. And PCI 1 DOF, I don't know what this PCI vendor ID is, but let us have a look if one of the GPU nodes is coming up. I'll see this right note. So 
this is one of my GPU nodes, and this is the other one, seeing by the H. And if we have a look at the GPU node, we are looking for something like PCI 10DE. 10DE is the hex number, the vendor PCI vendor ID of NVIDIA. So now we have all the pieces and the nodes are labeled correctly so that we can steer our NV stack on the right nodes. Um, one thing we need to do is we have currently a wrong cryo config in this version. There's an upstream fix for that. So we need to fit, uh, to reload cryo with uh, some corrected config. So that's what we're going to do now to enable the hook directory. Uh, the How GPUs are enabled in in a container is that NVIDIA has written a pre-stat hook. A pre-stat hook is called during the runtime of or stages or life cycles from of a container. And the pre-stat hook is executed just before the command is uh, run. It mounts all the needed libraries, binaries, and devices into the container. And since we are here on an, a non-writable system, we have no chance to write to slash USR. So we need to change the hook to slash etc, which is the default where the preset hook is installed. Do OC debug note. Post and then yeah, it is cryo conf and we need to look for the hook steer. So this is the wrong hook steer because we cannot write to slash user. We need to change this to uh, slash etc. Free the w etc. Right quit system ctl reload. And we are on another of our on our another node. Just change the same settings. Let's use just and reload and restart. So we prepared the host uh, and the node so that preset hooks are placed in the right directory and cryo is now able to pick up the preset hook. Otherwise, uh, cryo wouldn't find this hook in slash etc because it will just look in slash USR. Uh, the hooks are prepared. We've built the driver container. We labeled the nodes. And if these ready, uh, the next step is to install the NVIDIA GPU operator. We are currently using it, going to do it via Helm. Uh, also in the working to add it to the operator hub to have it in OKD. So later on, it would be just a click in operator hub and instantiating a cluster policy with the right settings without fiddling too much around. But for now, we have to do it via Helm. Um, we create a project for the GPU operator where we can save our stuff. And then Helm install. There are a lot of settings we are setting here, uh, which usually are encoded in the CR when they're um, instantiating from operator hub. But since we are overriding the driver container, um, we need to add stuff like platform OpenShift true that we have the default runtime cryo because the GPU operator works also on, on Docker and container D. Um, adding our driver repository we created before, a driver version, toolkit version, and we are saying we have NFT enabled faults because the, the NVIDIA GPU operator is also able to install NFT, but this would be an upstream NFT and not the tested NFT, the downstream version, which is shipped by RHEL and which is certified. So let's hit this. And 
Uh, okay, some leftovers from before. Uh, I'll see. You need. I was doing a dry run a half an hour ago, but forgot to clean up some of the pieces. This looks better. One, two, three. Okay. So you get part. We have the GPU operator running here. Also get put in GPU operator sources. We have the complete stack starting to enable. A container toolkit will install uh, the pre-start hook. We have the driver theme set, which is the driver container we just created. Uh, let us switch to project. Part or driver set dash or YAML web image. So this is the one we created before. We instantiated with the right driver container so that you're running a Fedora 32 driver container. Um, then the device plugin is used for exposing the hardware to the cluster. And after each of those steps, we are running a validation step. The NVIDIA driver validation will just run a small CUDA, CUDA application, CUDA vectorette, allocating memory, doing some computations to verify that the driver is working. After the device, the device plugin is uh, deployed, we are running a device plugin validation, um, allocating an extended resource and running the same CUDA vectorette on to verify that the device plugin and CUDA is still working. Uh, custom node exporter for NVIDIA metrics. Uh, I will show later on uh, Prometheus integration for for NVIDIA and said before the cool the toolkit is uh, for the for the preset of so it parts. We have a bug in the NVIDIA NVIDIA device plugin theme set. It's not restarting on error. This is from the early days where people were not using NFD and have uh, the device plugin running since the daemon set, it will run on any node. And so the daemon set were running on a CPU node and NVIDIA decided to, to just uh, sleep on an error, which should be fixed in the next release. We can just OC delete those parts for a restart. Themes that are not running to completion, they are just sleeping here and not. Blocks. At first, should have checked that the NVIDIA driver theme set is. Oh, it's not yet ready. So what the driver container is currently doing now, it's building the kernel modules on the fly on the cluster. Um, the other step was just to prepare the container with some with the source code and the tools that we need. And the driver container will then figure out on the cluster when it's running uh, the kernel version, uh, install kernel devil headers and other tools that it's need for for building and then build the drivers and the kernel modules on the fly on the cluster. Take a one minute. 
Okay, wait, 4899, so this is good. She loves, uh, let just look for the other priority set. Then also get caught and OC logs F. Is that device plugin? The device plugin validation is going to be restarted. It's completed. OC logs. You can see that the test passed done. OC. Yeah, but can we can wait for a restart of the NVIDIA driver validation, but we can also delete it, make it faster. OC logs of the NVIDIA driver validation should also say test passed. OC part. And the complete stack is completed for the parts that should be completed, and all the other parts are running. Um, we can now look again at the nodes. I will see this scribe nodes and one of the GPU nodes just to have a look on the exposed exposed ended resource. We see here we have a a capacity of one GPU and allocatable of one. So we, we are now ready to run a, a GPU workload and a pod allocating this extended resource. This I have prepared a MPI workload which runs uh, TensorFlow distributed by Horowat. Pretty simple. We just need to deploy the MPI operator, which creates a CRD MPI job. We can instantiate a CR with an MPI job. It's all documented and linked in the document I shared. And let's just have a look. It is deployed. Okay, it's running. Oh, next time I should switch the, the namespace. But as we see, we have here a, a launcher, which is the part that launches the MPI jobs. And for each node, we are getting a MPI job on a worker running. Uh, let's just wait for pulling those images. They are pretty big. Then we can take a look at the logs that they are actually using a GPU and doing some training. Okay, what also works with uh, GPUs is auto scaling. Uh, you can create a auto scaler that references this very machine set that we created here. So if a pod came in with min and max, uh, and if a pod came in and Kubernetes scaler sees it's it's impending, the autoscaler plus autoscaler will kick off on AWS, will kick off and create a GPU node. Uh, the NVIDIA GPU operator will take care of, of uh, installing the NV stack. The NFD will label it so the operator knows where to deploy all the pieces and uh, uh, workload can run. I for all the steps that are needed for this one, I uh, linked it in the document I just shared. And let's just wait. But maybe this would be a a good pause to answer some question if there are some questions coming up. Actually, I think you're doing a pretty wonderful job of um, doing this, and not a lot of questions are coming in. However, um, the document that you shared with the notes, yeah. I think a few people are having some technical difficulties getting into it. And I'm wondering if um, either after this demo, you can make this into something um, that's more public than the Google Doc. Um, yeah. So that we can have access to it maybe somewhere in the OKD repo or 
wherever Christian and and uh, the team think that. Yeah, if to. there's yeah if there's some something that's more more publicly available, I'm happy to to share it. Yeah. And update it as we are proceeding and adding all the parts that I that I have uh, mentioned here that are still uh, work in progress. So there's this great hackmd.io tool, which is like an like an Etherpad, but it uses Markdown the same way GitHub does. You can actually store it yeah. in GitHub as well, um, and that you can put permissions on there, similar to Google Docs, but it's more collaborative and more open. Um, more, so maybe yeah. that's a good choice. Otherwise, uh, a PR to to the OKD repository would be super. Yeah, that, that's what <laughs> I put it in HackMD. We can all hack on it and add to it and get our feedback on it. But um, I think the long, like getting into the docs, how to configure GPUs and stuff like that, eventually, I think is a, a, a not long term, medium term goal. As well, so we, we we tend to do a lot of documentation by blogging, um, so we clean some of that up. Yeah, it's a red hat habit. Maybe we should. Yeah, maybe I should do a OKD GPU blog. But since I'm I'm covering a lot of the yeah, maybe I should do it on the OKD. There are also some documents on how. SRO and the NVIDIA GPU operator work internally. Uh, if you're looking on OpenShift for how to enable hub accelerators, there are several parts describing what a driver container is, how to use entitled builds, uh, how, because SRO it was always a template for hardware vendors to enable them, because most of the steps are always, uh, will always repeat, like enable, enable the hardware with the driver, which is a driver container because as you can deploy a driver container on Red Hat Core S, Fedora Core S, REL 7, uh, REL 8, uh, even on, on, on Ubuntu. Uh, so it's you don't have to fiddle around with the host because we said from the beginning, don't touch the host at all, uh, keep it in a container because then it's far easier for an operator to pull, pull, pull those images or update the drivers. Uh, and with the conjunction with NFD, we have all runtime information there to easily tag or pull the right container into the cluster. And then after the driver container is deployed, we have the device plugin, which exposes the hardware. Then we have the node exporter, uh, which exposes metrics. And uh, we also had in SRO a custom Grafana, which also exposed um, a GPU dashboard. Um, and NVIDIA is currently thinking of, of adding this as well, so that they have maybe their own Grafana dashboard just for GPUs and their metrics, what they have, uh, because it's it's far a lot of metrics and that they can expose uh, like NVLink metrics. Uh, then if you're doing multi-node, all the stuff that would you bend with from node to node and then all the GPU metrics and, and alerts if, if you're overheating, if you're not using the GPU because they cost a lot of money. So a lot of stuff that can be added to the GPU operator. So we are still working with NVIDIA to, to add uh, the features that we already had uh, with SRO. Um, besides that, as I said, there's always this template repeating, and we've developed SRO in such a way that you could just templatize. It's all templatized. You don't have to write any Go code to enable another uh, accelerator, and that's what we what we've done with Mellanox, for example, uh, to enable RDMA. Um, the only thing we supplied is a custom CR, or some manifests and the operator takes care of it, uh, ordering uh, state transitions, um, RBAC rules, and stuff like that. So we are at the end, uh, TensorFlow run here, GPU workload run multi-node uh, with MPI and Horowitz distributed. And uh, that's the end of my demo here. Awesome. I'm happy to answer any other question if they came up. Oh, I think, is it, um, and I'm not sure whether, can you boot into um, the OKD dashboard from here? Just to end on a screenshot. Proving out that it is actually deployed. 
is what deployed exactly what that means and it's tiny tiny font that you have in that screen so yeah yeah it's uh just a second yeah that's okay And you did make it look easy. So um, hopefully we can get this documentation um, up and accessible somewhere so that other people can test it out. There are a couple of people who tested it out. So Joseph Meyer, who is, I think, the next speaker, he's done that. And he followed the document and made it run on his cluster. And our next speaker is, um, I think Justin Pittman is coming on board next, and then um, Joseph will be on after that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Justin's going to try and attempt to do OKD on overt and I using IPI, um, living dangerously on the edge. Yeah, I just wanted to say this has been a feature that has been requested um, a lot of times, actually, in, in the working group meetings not only by Joseph, but I think others as well. So really great to see this works because we weren't able to definitively say it works um, as is nobody had tested it out, but that's super great to see. There we go. If you're supposed to be seeing your other terminal, we're not at the moment, Franco. Yeah, I'm just trying to log in to the console, having trouble. Oh. Let me just get me this thing. Oh. Okay, it should be monitoring metrics and DCGM. So DCGM is the data center monitoring stack of NVIDIA and here's GPU temp, G GPU utilization, for example, run queries. And we've seen here that we've done some work. So the metrics are working, uh, workloads, pods, all projects. We were in GPU operator resources. There should be the TensorFlow benchmark launcher and if you look at the logs we see the same logs we've seen before on my console uh tensorflow running uh what else the pods i don't know what else to show to prove that it works i think you've but... proven it i think you've, you've actually done something pretty awesome and um we're really grateful that you took the time today to come and join us so um, I know we'll probably hook, hook you up with a, a lot more questions afterwards. I'll, I'll join um, uh, your, your email and, and your um, contact information. I'll put that out there um, on the working group. So if people have questions, they can um, reach out to you directly or um, post questions. Um, actually, that's probably a better question. Where is the best way to, if we have questions about the NVIDIA GPU and working with OpenShift and OKD, what's the best route to asking those questions? Uh, I'm on the Kubernetes Slack, and email is always a, a good way. And I would say Slack on Kubernetes or, or email would be the fastest thing. Uh, to to ask questions, and then if there's some some other problems that are not related, I can steer the people to the right uh, contacts. If something is uh, missing, or we need to do more work, or um, but I'm tracking tracking all the work upstream with Nvidia. I'm the technical lead for GPUs on OpenShift, so uh, any any requirement uh, I'm happy to help get those things upstream or uh, to have more features included. Perfect. 
And um, we're in talks right now um, for in October to do an MLAI OpenShift Commons gathering um, co-located with the, the GTC's event that's going to be virtual then. So we'll probably see a lot more from you and other folks doing interesting workloads here. So, um, you know, I look forward to all of that. Um, and October should be a really interesting month because we'll have both that GTC event and I think we're going to try and do something with open infrastructure um, around OpenStack and an OpenShift Commons gathering. So we'll be busy in October and probably the ramp up to that. So uh, also I'll share the link and chat to the video from last week that you did that was a deeper dive um, into it um, and we'll get all this up and running. Um, and up on our YouTube channel again um, in a playlist for today and um, great work. Uh, I'm totally appreciative and we all are um, of all the efforts that go into the accelerator program. Um, yeah. So thanks. Um, so I'm not seeing any more questions um, anywhere. So um, what I'm going to ask, I'm going to put Charo on the spot. We have 20 spare minutes here about. Um, which demo, Charo, would you like to try? Rooksef or there was one other one, the Mar Maria DVP? Well, they, they need to go in order because we have to have storage to provision uh, in order to deploy a MariaDB Galera cluster. So we'll, we'll start with the um, Ceph operator and we'll go from there. Awesome. We're never at a loss for things to demo on OKT. Right. This is probably going to be a little less polished, but we're going to do it anyway. And this, by the way, is what we do to all new employees. We just throw them into the fire pit and um, stoke it until they... Good luck. If they can demo anything. I cheat sheet here. The rat hat hot seat. Okay, so a, a lot of um, a lot of what you're going to see here, I, I pulled the configuration that we're going to deploy directly out of the Rook project, which you should be seeing on your screens right now. So. So what you see me um, running here, I, I pulled from here specifically, um, let me clear this out if you guys can see the screen on the left. The um, common YAML file and the operator OpenShift YAML file, um, those are pulled verbatim from this project. Um, you, can see the, you can see the path here to get to it, and it's release 1.4. Um, it's the latest release. I'm not quite brave enough to run directly out of master at this point. So uh, back to the cluster that we deployed earlier this morning. Um, you can see it is fortunately still healthy. Um, there's a few errors being thrown, but it tends to do that in my home lab, um, network latency and such. So what we're going to do first is the three worker nodes that we deployed, what I didn't tell you when I deployed them was that I actually deployed them with an unused uh, hard drive attached to the virtual machine. So it installed the operating system, uh, it's using a SATA bus, so it installed the operating system on SDA. Uh, but it's got an SDB sitting there that is not currently being used. What we're going to do is we're going to create a, a Ceph uh, storage cluster to serve up block devices on these worker nodes. The first step is we need to label those nodes uh, to give them a role of storage node. And so I just applied that label to them. If I hit a quick OC describe on one of those nodes, I can show you that it now has a role, a storage node. Okay, so that's step one, is we, we, we need something to tell Ceph uh, what it's going to be working with. Step two is we're going to deploy 
um, this common dot YAML, which as you can see is creating a whole lot of boilerplate that the rook operator is going to need. And one of the things that it did was it provisioned for us a namespace, the rook Seth namespace, which currently is very uninteresting. We're getting ready to make it interesting by deploying the rook operator. And this will take a little bit for it to bootstrap itself. The, the operator image right now is pulling down uh, and installing. When the operator is up, it's going to create uh, some workloads, some pods on each of those nodes that bear the label so that they can discover uh, the, the resources available on that node. And this, this will take just a little bit to run. Okay, and there you see the, the three uh, discovery nodes that are spinning up now. And while those are coming up, let me show you a little bit bigger so that you can see it on the screen. Okay, the cluster.yaml file is the thing that actually defines um, our particular Ceph cluster. And, and again, the, the um, Rook project uh, has a, a, a boilerplate copy of this for you to, to take and modify to your own purposes. Uh, this is the version of Ceph we're gonna be running, 15.2.4. Um, we're going to have three monitor nodes running. I have set node affinity on those and that it's also going to be looking for a role of storage node. I've assigned resources for the various components of Ceph, uh, a limit and a request, um, ju just like you see in a, a typical deployment. And here is the piece of magic that tells it where to find those devices that it's going to create the Ceph storage cluster on. So now our operator uh, appears to be fully bootstrapped and up and running. So the next step is to go ahead and deploy our Ceph cluster on top of that. All right, now this is also going to take a little bit, and you're going to see a bunch of activity here as the operator provisions this cluster. There's the three monitor instances you just saw spin up. Um, there's the CSI plugins. Here in a minute, it will start actually dealing with those physical devices and formatting the storage for its own use. Okay, you see these OSD prepares? There's three of them. When they are done, they're gonna go into a completed state once you see that completed state, um, then the Ceph cluster is up and it is ready for use. Uh, looks like we're still waiting for one of the crash collectors to go into a ready state, but everything else at this point should be usable. So to prove that it's usable, Let's take our image registry and let's give it a persistent volume. I've created a storage class here that I'm going to apply. 
Uh, its name is Rook Seth Block, and it's going to use the new Rook um, Seth CSI plugin that we just deployed uh, as the provisioner. So I will apply that to my cluster. All right now, if I flip back over here, go down to storage, um, we should have a storage class, and indeed we do. So now, let's create a persistent volume claim, 100 gigabytes, because I tend to use a lot of container images. All right, now we should have persistent volume claim. And the key here, you can see now, it is bound to an automatically provisioned persistent volume that our Ceph cluster kindly handed out for us. Uh, we can see that from the command line as well. There it is, 100 gigabytes. Now, Remember, if you were watching previously, when we deployed the OpenShift cluster, we gave our image registry an ephemeral volume. We need to remove that ephemeral volume before we give it the new volume. So, caveat here, any uh, images that you, current, that you had put in between, you, you're going to lose those because we're yanking away the, the storage. Uh, you will lost them anyway because this is an ephemeral volume. Now, I'm going to put our registry back into a managed state. We're going to tell it to use the persistent volume claim, uh, registry PVC. We're also changing the rollout strategy of this to a recreate. Because I created a rewrite once volume, um, the, the rollout strategy that comes by default is not going to work because it it will try to, to do a rolling um, deployment. I, I need this to tear down the first instance and create a new instance so that it doesn't try to violate the read-write-once read policy. So we just patched it. If we log back into our cluster and look at the image registry, there we go. We have an OpenShift image registry that's creating and should be binding to that persistent volume claim. So I'll pause there. Any questions on that? I know that was pretty fast. I think you're doing pretty good here. All right. I will now deploy a MariaDB Galera cluster. It's going to be a stateful set. What we're going to do, we're going to deploy uh, this stateful set right here, um, which is going to create a three node MariaDB Galera cluster from a customized image that we're going to build and push into the image registry that we just created. First thing we need to do is build our image, which the official MariaDB repository, it's going to install uh, 10.4. Our Docker file looks something like this. Um, so we're going to do some things to set up a MariaDB. The real magic happens in this um, shell script that 
is going to be run by the image when it starts up that actually provisions the MariaDB cluster, detects um, whether or not a cluster already exists, if it's the first node in the cluster, so forth and so on. Um, I've got a short tutorial written up on this that you can see, so I won't drain it here. We'll just do the fun and kick it off. So first thing I need to do is make sure I'm logged in. Okay, and I am in the right cluster. Important safety tip, always make sure you're logged into the right cluster. So I need to expose a route for the image registry. What I just did is I patched the image registry operator to say create a default route so that I can externally get to my image registry. Then I'm going to use Podman and I'm going to log into that image registry. Hooray, it succeeded. And now I'm going to do a Podman build and build our MariaDB image. And you see, I'm I'm grabbing the route from the from the image registry uh, to tag my image that I'm getting ready to build so that I can push it to the directory. And it generally doesn't run that fast. I ran this just a little bit ago to make sure it was going to work. That's why that build went so fast because it had already actually been built. So all it did was add a tag to the already built image. Now we'll push it to the registry. Okay, so now our OpenShift cluster in its local cluster registry, it now has our customized MariaDB Galera uh, image. So let's create a namespace for it. Let's create a service account. Okay, we're gonna create a service account for MariaDB. The reason is MariaDB is picky about its UID. Uh, and it's especially picky if it restarts and its UID has changed, it tends to get upset. So we're creating a service account and we're actually gonna run this privileged uh, with this new service account so that it can run as any UID. There is likely a better way to do this, and so I am open to suggestions. And now I'm going to apply a config map that actually contains the MariaDB server.cnf file. So by, by using a config map to do this, I can modify the configuration of my cluster without having to deploy new images. I'm now going to apply a couple of services. One of them is a headless service that allows the cluster to talk to itself on the necessary TCP and UDP ports. And then I'm going to deploy a load balanced service that will allow applications to talk to the cluster. Not sure why that's taking so long to come back. Okay. Now, before I hit this, I'm going to um, switch over here so that you guys can see the deployment. All right. So I'm going to deploy the stateful set, and what you'll see in the console is a ordered deployment of the MariaDB stateful set. Good, we should see this PVC. Okay, good, the PVC bound. Now we have persistent volume. And you see the uh, first 
node in our three node Galera cluster is now starting. So just pause just for half a second. Someone's asking, Frank's asking a question. He missed the very first part of your Rook operator installation, and he says he yeah. has no Rook operators with his IPI based cluster installation. Um, is the operator hub filtering operators based on UPI IPI installation choice? Maybe clarify that for him. Okay, good, good point. I actually deployed the operator from the command line because it doesn't show up in the operator hub. See, not there. Um, not sure why. Uh, I I, I, it, it may be one of the ones that um, we need to, um, as a working group, add in a community yeah. version. There's a community version of it on operatorhub.io that works with generic Kubernetes, but I think we need to do some work. I think it's on one of the ones that's on the priority list for us to work on as a working group. Yeah, and that's why I, I deployed it by using the um, operator configuration that is provided in the um, Kubernetes Ceph examples in the Rook project itself. All right, so our second uh, cluster node is coming up, and these do and these do an ordered startup and an ordered shutdown, so that you can gracefully stop and start this cluster, and it will retain its state. And, and when this is done, we have a three-node MariaDB Galera cluster that is a full multi-master database cluster running in our OpenShift with. Provisioned storage. Wow. Well played. Thanks, Charo. Uh, that was pretty awesome. Um, I think, I, I, and I keep emphasizing um, in the chat too, is well, some of the operator work is the next things on the roadmap that we're trying to get um, folks to work on. So getting some of those um, default operators from Operator Hub into community. So we'll, we'll be working on that. So you have filled the time very nicely. Justin Pittman's here, and he is going to try and outdo you on bare metal. Um. <laughs>